Okay, let's uh, start our class. Uh, we're going to uh, start with uh, lesson 20 today. And uh, let me just check it here. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, okay, Jose, let's start with some speaking, uh, the uh, uh, speaking part. And uh, if you can see here, there are different, uh, well, the, 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 the title is No Place to Hide. So uh, the uh, speaking part says here, look at the five photographs of clues in a police case. Discuss which two clues are the most reliable given and given reasons you have for your choice. So which are, are which of these five uh, clues do you think will be the most reliable and why? I think the most reliable will be uh, number one because I, I think uh, everybody has uh, uh, a special, special, uh, how can I say, wedge? Uh, it's for print, but let me see. Let me see. F fingerprint. Fingerprint. Okay, I think that uh, everybody have a, a special uh, fingerprint, and I think that someone, in, if if you if you make some, for example, um, if you make some murder, if you if you let your your finger printing in, in some some object i think it's very it's very very easy that the police can can identify who you are okay and and the other one remember is at, uh the most yeah you need to choose two just discuss two. which two clues are the most reliable which number Two. Uh huh. Why? It's her. Uh huh. Yes. It's her. Uh, number four is her. Uh. Number four. Uh, I don't know. I think it's something like chemical that you know, something that they're just doing with some chemical things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh well, I, I think that uh, the number two is very important because, yeah. If you let some um, DNA, I think uh, uh -huh. DNA. Uh, did I say okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah, DNA. Uh -huh. DNA, and and the 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 police can can study and and identify with some studies which this heart of who is this heart this this spice of, or or her. Uh -huh, oh, okay. and, and I think that the police can can identify you. Uh -huh. Okay, very good, very good, Jose. Here, uh, what we are practicing is uh, part three. Remember of the uh, speaking when they when when you need to choose the best two or the uh, the least two, whatever, right? Remember that part that they they give you only one minute for you to talk. So it's very important for us to choose. Whenever they tell us uh, which are the best two, or the, the in this case, uh, which clues are the most reliable, uh, we just can talk about the, the the two of them right away. Okay? Because in, in the real test, we only have one minute, so it's very important for us to just choose uh, both of them right away, and then tell why you think they are the most reliable in this case, right? Okay. <laughs> but that will be uh, very uh, important for us to to know uh, regarding that part three, when we need to talk for one minute. <laughs> okay. I have to, to choose the best two options and talk about about all the two options. Yeah, that, that's a- Give reasons why, is, why I think that is the, the most important. Correct, so you can say for example, yes, I think that the, the, uh, the two clues that are most reliable are number one, which is uh, the footprint, and number two, which is, uh, grabbing a hair because uh, first of all, number one is that, well, there's only, uh, every person only has 
one uh, specific uh, fingerprint and that can be very easy to track somebody. And uh, number two is uh, also important because uh, with the hair, you by uh, a DNA test, you can identify also who the person is. Yeah, so, but it's, it's important for us to choose right away the, the, the two of them, right? But remember, okay. that's in part three. When uh, for two minutes you discuss about different things, remember, and then for one minute you need to choose the best two or the least two. They they will always tell you two, you know, uh, on that okay. part. So it's very important for us to know that. Also, uh, here in number two, it says here now discuss the following questions together. It says, what do you think are the causes of crime? And they put an example on unemployment. But can you give me some other examples of crime? I mean, of, of a cause that uh, of crime. Uh, for example, here in our country. And probably I think that people who who usually um, consume drugs, I think they they're trying to 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 get or to to get some money still still stealing to the to the other people uh, money or the cell phones or their backpacks or their wallets and they try to 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 steal that for for buying some drugs uh -huh. and so, I think so drugs will be uh, one of the causes you mean yeah yes. okay drugs do you have some other examples or just drugs um, I think it would be a, 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 I don't know, a problems with other people that they don't, they, that they can't stand with them. And I think they, they, they would, they could be, make a crime if, if, if they, if they can't stand with, with other people. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, uh, let's go here with number. Uh, well, uh, question B it says: Do films and TV programs about violent crime help to cause more crime? Why or why not? I think that that is that is true, because I think that the, for example, there are soap operas in which uh, there are people who who are very very that they don't they don't don't matter uh, how many people they they have to to kill or to endure to to reach something that they want for example um if they if they sell drugs or if they are making something illegal i think that it could be uh, um, if they can encourage to the other people who to do some crime. Okay, so yeah, so do you do you mean like uh, if some if there is like a, a TV program that uh, people is consuming drugs or selling drugs that can yeah. motivate people to yeah. do it? Yeah. Okay. And what about? Uh, well, yeah, it says films. Yeah, films or TV programs. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, and let's go with part C. It says, should life imprisonment mean life? Uh, this one here. Well, this, this, uh, this, this phrase uh, says, should life in imprisonment mean life? This is like to be in, in, in prison, right? To, to be like, 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 yeah, like in jail. <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't get the question here. It's kind of weird, right? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, skip this one for, for the moment. It says, is, is prison really the answer to crime? This is a, a, a very good question. Is prison really the, uh, the answer to crime? I don't think so because I, I I I I hear from some people who stay in 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 in, in the jail in or prison, six huh? or in prison 
for four or five years and and when they they are uh, and, and when when they leave the prison they uh -huh. they make the 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 the, the the same acts for crime or or, or or violent. I think that it doesn't actually it doesn't the the, the answer. So you so so you don't you don't think that people change is if they go to prison? No. Oh, okay. Some people can change, but I um, the majority, I think, that doesn't change. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jose, uh, very good. Let's uh, go here very quick to this reading part. And uh, it says here, look at the vocabulary related to crime below. These are all words and phrases that you will see in the article you are going to read. Uh, it says, mm -hmm. fill the gaps in the sentences with the word or phrase with fits with fits best it says you may have to change the form of the verb so we need to be careful mm -hmm. on that and also remember to use your english english dictionary to help you if you, if you have there one handy that's okay oh if not you can just uh work without without it for example do you know this mm -hmm. phrase to cover your your tracks do you know this this phrase Gorilla legends correct the the suspect uh -huh. The proof? Prueba. Uh -huh. Guilty? I don't, I don't know what, what it is. Culpable. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, Culpable. Uh, this one, a forensic scientist? Forensic. Correct. Uh -huh. Ge genetic code? Uh -huh. Evidence, it's very easy, right? Evidence. Mm -hmm. And to take someone to court, that's also easy, right? Mm -hmm. So let's yeah, well, let's let's use this uh, this vocabulary over here to uh, mm -hmm. to fill out the blanks. Can 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 you see it in your in your cell phone? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I can give you uh, two two minutes. Uh, maybe two minutes and a half, mm -hmm. for you to uh, fill out these, these uh, uh, sentences with this uh, vocabulary, okay? And we will check it uh, right away.
finish. Teacher. Okay, let's uh, check it right away. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, which uh, did you put in uh, letter A? A forensic scientist. That is correct. Uh, B? The proof. The proof, correct. C? Guilty. Guilty, yes. D? Genetic code. Very good. E? Evidence. Uh huh. F? Respect. Uh, F will be uh, to cover your tracks. Cover your tracks. To cover your tracks. And G? Um, take someone to court. Take to the court. Uh, that will be uh, with the, uh, that take will be using the, the mm -hmm. uh, past participle. So it will be taken to court. Taken. Uh -huh, taken. Okay, very, very good, Jose. Uh, let's very quick go to our, uh, let me just put here. Some, let me just put here. Let's uh, see the, the grammar part very quick. And uh, we're going to see gerunds and infinitives part two. Remember, we have already seen a little bit of how to, to use gerunds and how to use infinitives. But now there's like another mm -hmm. part for gerunds and infinitives that is very important for us to just review in general. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's just go very quick here. Some verbs can be followed by both a gerund okay. and... Uh -huh. Perfect. Yes. Es que la que torta porque se me va a apagar el teléfono y no ando el cargador. Ajá. Ah. Uh. O sea, todavía me quedan como 10%, pero no creo que me eso me, me llegue para terminar la clase. Ah, ok, ok, espera para ver. Eh. Okay. Es que yo pensé que andaba el cargador aquí en el bolso. Okay, so I'm sorry. So uh, we were in mute. I'm sorry. So uh, again, verbs such as start, begin, continue, attempt, intent, be accustomed to, be committed to, can bear. This can be used with either a gerund or an infinitive with no real change in meaning. So for example, I can just say the audience started to clap when the performance finished. Oh, the audience started clapping when the performance finished. So in this case, with these verbs, uh, if I use a gerund or if I use an, an infinitive, it doesn't change. The meaning doesn't change. Let's go with the other one. It says a slight change. So it does, that when it says a slight change, it's just a, a, a little change, right? So uh, that's something that that is just uh, a, a little bit of change, right? So let's... Uh, uh, see it here very quick. So for verbs such as like, prefer, hate, or love. For example, if I say I like swimming, that means that I like in general swimming, right? But if I say I like to swim in the morning, it's talking about a habit. So if I want to talk something in a more specific way, I will say I like to swim in the morning. Know that in American English, the infinitive is used more often than the gerund for both meanings. After uh, would like, would prefer, would hate, and would love, an infinitive is used for a particular occasion or event. So for example, would you like to dance? 
also a change in meaning. Verbs such as try, stop, regret, remember, forget, mean, go on. For example, if I say, I tried to open the window, but it was stuck. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it as it was too difficult, right? Or it was hot, so I tried opening the window. I did it as an experiment to see if some fresh air would help. Okay, so we have here both of the, uh, the, the differences, right? Also with stop, if I say I stopped the car to get some patrol. Patrol is gasoline, okay? Uh, patrol is very common in, uh, in British. So for example, I stopped the car to get, right? Some uh, patrol, it's the purpose. But if I say I stopped going to the garage when they put their prices, uh, their prices up, I didn't go there anymore. Okay, so it's kind of uh, very interesting the how the meaning changes if I'm using a, a an infinitive or if I'm using a gerund. With the verb regret, if I say I regret to tell you that we have no more rooms available, that means giving bad news. But if I say I regret not making more friends when I was at school, that was that's used for past events. So if I'm using the gerund, it's for past events, and if I'm using the infinitive, it's just giving bad news. Let's go with these verbs, remember and forget, okay? So if I say, I remember uh, never, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I remember forget going to New York on Concord when I was quite small. Or you can say, I never forget going to New York on Concord when I was very, uh, quite small. This happened in the past. But if you say, uh, I must remember, uh, or I mustn't forget to buy a newspaper while I'm out shopping, this still hasn't happened. So uh, these are both of the examples that we have here with these verbs. Let's go very quick with the other one. This other example, for example, mean, it says, I mean to work hard at university. That's an intention, right? Something that you intended to. Or it will mean going to the library more often. This is what it involves. This is the result. Okay, so we have uh, these two examples with the verb mean. With go on, if I say when I finish shopping, I think I'll go on to see a film. Go on to see a film as a change of activity. So I change from shopping to see, to watch or to see a film. But if I say, please don't stop. Go on showing us your photos. That means to continue. Okay, so it's very, very important for us to know uh, this uh, type of, of uh, I mean, how the verbs change with gerunds and with infinitives. So uh, going back to our book, uh, we can practice this. Well, uh, before that, I will be sending you a picture of this uh, part where it says the, the professional so that you can work on this uh, part of the test. Remember, we uh, should always practice for the test in these lessons since uh, hopefully you guys are gonna be doing this test at the beginning of next year, right? So uh, it's very, very important for you to take the time to practice directly for the test. And here we're practicing for part six of the reading and use of English, which is just taking out those sentences from the paragraph and put them correctly okay and uh also i'll be sending you this listening part where it says before you listen to the recording read through the questions and make sure you understand them you are going to hear a radio news item about the arrest of a robber in the usa take notes while you are listening and then in pairs discuss the answers to the questions okay so uh, this is a very, very important part so that we can practice listening. Please uh, do it. Uh, and uh, I will be sending you the answers also for this uh, listening part. Okay, uh, for this uh, gerund and if it says in unit seven, you look at which verb or expression took a gerund and which took an infinitive. However, there are some verbs that can take both. 
and we have already seen it. So uh, this is like a summary of what I already told you, what I already explained to you. So, uh, well, it says in pairs, but you guys can talk directly there in your house. It says, talk about the difference in meaning in these pairs of sentences. So uh, please take a look at that. I'll, I'll take a look of this right now. And uh, in your house, try to write down the, the differences. I can give you some, uh, some uh, I can give you a moment so that you can read it carefully and write the differences of these uh, sentences. So let's go uh, uh, one by one here. So I will give you some time for you to uh, do that right now. Okay, uh, I'll be sending you also the answers of the differences of these uh, gerunds and infinitive sentences and uh, what each of these sentences mean. So it's, it's, it's also very, very important. Uh, also, I, I always like to read to you this uh, corpus spot because it says the Cambridge Learner Corpus show that exam candidates often make mistakes with the use of stop, infinitive and stop gerund. So, for example, uh, here we have, uh, my advice to you is to stop working too hard. Not my advice to you is to stop work right, too hard. So uh, again, I already explained to you uh, the usage of uh, the verb work and uh, regarding a gerund and an infinitive. Uh, I'll be sending you also uh, these uh, two practices four and five on, on a picture on your cell phone so that you can, so that you please practice uh, the uh, when to use uh, an infinitive and when to use a gerund in this in these sentences. So please uh, work on this and uh, also I'll be sending you the answers for uh, this part. So it's very, very important for you to practice part four and five of uh, gerunds and infinitives. Okay, uh, well, since uh, I would like also to work uh, with a, a writing part, and uh, that will be the last part of this uh, lesson. And uh, it was just writing an email. You already have the uh, the format of the email, and uh, this will be the uh, the email that I would like for you to write. But it says here, uh, let's just read in general the information. Writing folder one dealt with informal letters and the importance of, of writing in a con constantly informal style. This writing folder looks at ways in which you can demonstrate your full range of language in an email. So uh, it says, read this exam task of the information on an assessment, then take grammatical areas you will expect to see in the replay to Joe. So, uh, it says here, you have just received this email from Joe, a friend in Canada. So let's see what Joe asks. He says, uh, it says, from Joe, subject help me. I really want to be selected for the college ice hockey team, but I know I am not fit enough. There are only four weeks until the trial takes trials take place. What should I do between now and then? 
please give me some advice. So uh, that's what your email in this case needs to uh, tell Joe, right? Uh, so just give some advice on what to do to, uh, well, just to see if he can be a little bit fit, you know? So that's why, uh, that's, so you need to write an email telling Joe some advice regarding that. Uh, so they, they, we have here some, uh, in, uh, sorry, some information that can help you, for example, model verbs for advice and a suggestion, you, you can use that on your email. Uh, please, uh, also you can use some passive forms. You can uh, use some conditional uh, structures, relative clauses, perfect tenses, future continuous tense, or even some gerunds. So try to include some of these. This is, this is the uh, today's task. In your email, please try to include some of these uh, uh, grammatical parts, uh, at least one. But if you can include most of them, they'll be just great. And please, when you uh, write your email, please send it to me so that I can just check it and see uh, how, with the way that you used uh, these uh, model verbs, passive forms, conditional structures, relative clauses, perfect tenses, futures, and gerunds. Remember that uh, if you use some of these uh, regarding in your, uh, in your writing, they will give you some extra points. So it's very, very important for us to, uh, to know or to be able to uh, include these in our writing uh, exam. So please do it, and uh, again, I will be uh, checking your uh, your uh, emails, and then uh, I'll be, of course, sending you the the answers for it. Okay, uh, let's see here, just very quick, some advices that they uh, they show us here for uh, writing the uh, the the email. So it says. Read the question carefully and think about what the target reader needs to know. Include relevant information. That's also very important. Also, use an informal style. Remember, the email or letter is informal and friendly tone. Try to get your message across effectively. Then, uh, regarding in the uh, organization part, it says refer to what your friend has told you. Start a new paragraph for each new idea. Okay, remember these are the parts that they will check for us. And then in language, uh, don't just use simple uh, structures. Think of ways to show variety. Include some informal phrases and phrasal verbs. Use more adverbs, especially ones with negative prefixes. Uh, yeah, they impress examiners. Okay, so this is very, very, very important. Uh, use more adverbs, especially ones with negative pre prefixes. Okay, so uh, these are some tips that are going to help us for uh, writing our email. So uh, this is the email that you need to write. Please, as soon as you do it, send it to me so that I can check it. And again, I'll be sending you all the answers and also the, uh, the listening part so that you can uh, start doing it also once uh, or during this, uh, this class. So thank you very much, class. Uh, I hope that you are uh, watching these, uh, these videos and that you are taking advantage of your time practicing for this test. Again, I want to remind you that hopefully you guys are gonna be doing it next uh, Wednesday, sorry, next, uh, next uh, year and uh, or also, uh, yeah, we January or February that I hope that you guys should be doing this test. Uh, I send you today this uh, uh, testimony of uh, one of our uh, uh, students. She did the test last uh, last year, I guess. And uh, yeah, she was very uh, grateful about having the, that certificate. And that's what I really want, not only for her, but for all of you 
that you could have uh, that uh, B2. And of course, that's going to open a lot of doors in your uh, working uh, in environment. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Uh, see you then, hopefully, on Wednesday. Have a nice, uh, a nice evening. Bye-bye.